this was kind of deep. What's going on, y'all? This is me, your boy Scott, and we're here for another review of an episode of the of Iyanla Fix My Life, Season 7, Episode Fizzab. Let's get right on into this shit, okay? So this episode is about Lisa Ray, her daughter Kai, and her mother Katie. They're here to talk about their issues. They have a lot of things going on within their family, things that have not been discussed, things that have been discussed but have been swept under the rug, and um, we're here to talk about it. So at this point, Lisa Ray's mom lives with her, okay? Um, she was living with Lisa Ray for a while, was staying with Lisa Ray, then COVID happened and she stayed put. She had her own place but now she's here with Lisa Ray. They were talking about the issues that's been going on since she's been living under her roof. She says that her mother Katie has an attitude issue. But if she has an attitude issue, then we see exactly where she get it from. Cause, cause, um, well, we see exactly where it comes from. Well, we see exactly where Lisa Ray gets her attitude from if you, if you get my drift. I don't know why I couldn't get it out, but that's where she get it from. Because Katie got a lot of sass and a lot of attitude. And we already know that Lisa Ray has a lot of sass and a bit much attitude. If you get my drink. So then when it comes down to the issues that's regarding the family, Lisa Ray calls out her daughter Kai for being lazy. She says that she doesn't really do too much, but she does the bulk of everything that Kai needs. And because Kai already knows that if she don't have it, then Lisa Ray is going to have it. But it goes right back to Lisa Ray spoiling her as a child because she wasn't always around due to the fact that she was in the business. And it's kind of like how her father would spoil her. So it's like it, it's like a trickle effect, a trickle down to her when she had her own kid. Lisa Ray talked about how um, she was a daddy's girl. She was mainly close to her father. And um, when her father died, she wasn't ready to face life and life's choices and things that life gives you. The trials and tribulations of life. She wasn't ready for that. So, when she was trying to get herself together, she got pregnant. And that's when her life started to change. Lisa Ray's mom clearly still holds um, a bit of angst against um, Lisa Ray's father, who is deceased at this point, who's been deceased for quite some time now. And I really feel like she's still upset with Lisa Ray for always taking the side of her father. Even if you watch Lisa Ray's Uncensored, she did say that when her father died after her mom put her father out, she did make a statement sort um, along the lines of she wished it was her mother that died and not her father because that's just how close she was to her father, which was very hurtful and very disrespectful, but it was an honest feeling, to be honest. And I think with her father being gone, that gives Katie the initiative to fire at her for all the things that she said to her and for just and just mainly so for loving her father despite the fact that her father did some heinous things to her. Her meaning Katie. Kai feels like her issue is that it's her unbothered nature. She doesn't have much emotion. She's very numb, very nonchalant. And that's one thing that I myself can relate to her on. I'm very nonchalant about most things. There's a lot of things that has happened in my life that I never really show my feelings about. I don't allow myself to cry, especially in front of others. Um, when people cry in front of me, I don't cry with them. I really don't hug people. I don't rub their backs. Like if a person cries in front of me, I either sit like this or I hand them a tissue and go sit down. Like, it's it's just, I feel that it's weak to cry. I know I'm probably going to get stoned for that, but that's just how I feel. Sometimes, I, like, for, that's for me personally. If I cry, I feel like I'm weak. If I cry, I feel like um, too much emotion is showing a weakness. I always feel the need to be hard and be the strong one out of the bunch all the time. I basically had to work today and I left work today to tend to my mom and my brother, which I always have to do. They got mad with me because I said that no one cares. When you're a strong person, everybody feels like you got it all together when you really don't. So I understand her unbothered nature. She's very much so hardened based on the things that she's going through. Lisa says she has a heart and compassion. Um, she has a heart, she's giving, she sees empathy, she seeks empathy for other people, and she really, like, loves on people a lot. 
her mother was rolling her eyes because I guess she don't believe it. But Lisa Ray is a Libra and that's what they do. Katie starts going off on Lisa Ray and Kai. I feel like they've been that that is their dynamic. Um they always going off on each other. They never sees the good in each other. They always find a reason to go off. Um Katie is still upset about a lot of things that's happened. And um she's just letting it out. She says that we're here talking to Yonla for the truth. We're here to tell the truth and nothing but the goddamn truth. And that's what we here for. And uh, to be honest, it seems like there's a lot of things that Katie wants to get off her chest. And I think that we should just let her get it off her chest at this point. I mean, a lot of times when we keep things bottled in and honed in and all this other shit, you know, that just that just makes things horrible. You can't do that. You got to get this shit up off of you. And that's just what Katie got to do. So Kai and Iyanla have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And it's mainly about... Um, the things that happened between her and her mother. Like, I remember watching The Real McCoy, which was Lisa Ray's show that she had on TV one day, maybe about 10 years ago when she had it. Um, it seemed to me like Lisa Ray and Kai, and Kai had a pretty much close-knit relationship. You never would have thought that they had any problems, but a lot of the times, things on the outside ain't always what it is on the inside. So I always assumed that they had a close knit relationship, but apparently that they, they apparently they didn't. Kai had an attitude issue. She was very disobedient. She had to go get sent to a boarding school in Iowa in the middle of nowhere. And she was hurt by the fact that her mother sent her away. And um you know, she always had an attitude, and she never could get her attitude in order. So that's exactly where her issue lies in, and, and being that she had a lot of that going on in her life, she was able to be hardened and be unbothered and not really care about most things. Katie and Iyanla, they have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and Katie is clearly still raw about what happened between her and her husband. She still feels a way about the way her husband treated her. She still feels some way about the way Lisa Ray treated her in favor of her husband. And uh, and I think that she takes in, she has a lot of frustration towards her husband and she takes it out on Lisa Ray. I don't think that is right, but I don't think that it helps that Lisa Ray speaks very highly of her father despite his past transgressions and sometimes when you have a situation like this, it's like for me, there's a lot of people that I see that are terrible people, but people put them on a pedestal. And I think this, and that really irks me when I see people do that. Like, it's a person that I know that has never been nice to me, has always been a homophobe towards me, has always been a bitch towards me. This nigga ain't never been nothing to me. You know what I mean? But when I see other people put him on this pedestal and talk about how great of a person he is, that's something that I've never experienced. So when I see other people talk about how great he is as a person, that irritates the hell out of me. Because I don't see that person. So when Katie hears Lisa Ray put her father on a pedestal, that she doesn't feel like he deserves to be on because of the things that he did to her personally. I understand. But at the same time, you have to take accountability for your own decisions and your own actions because of the simple fact that you chose to be with this man despite the fact that you knew he had this woman, that woman, this woman, that woman, her, 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 her. You knew about all of these women. You knew about every last one of them. But you expected your daughter to take your side because she knew what type of man her father was. And she knew that her daddy was a whore. She knew that. But she still loved her father regardless of what the hell you thought and what the hell you had to say about it. So you're mad about that. You're frustrated about that. You don't understand why she would choose him over you after everything that he did to you. So you are still upset about that. But you got to take ownership of the things that you decided to do. You stayed with him because he had money. And that's why you don't need to be with somebody, be with somebody because they got money. Because if you're going to be with a person just because they got money, think about the things that you're going to have to endure because of that mindset. Lisa Ray um, talks about her situation with um, her daughter and how, because um, even her daughter said she didn't really miss her when she was going. Like, that really wasn't the case. So she was talking about how her daughter was um, had an attitude problem, you know, when she went off and, and did her thing. And how she got pregnant when she was trying to get her life together. And how her father's death was a big 
part of her life and all of that stuff. So it's like Lisa has a lot of things to learn too because, you know, she got that attitude because her mama got that attitude and the trickles right on down to her daughter. So all three of you got an attitude problem. Something that y'all got to feel. They're one-on-ones. They're having brunch. And Katie admits to some fault in the situation between her, her granddaughter, and her daughter. She feels like she has some type of blame to take in this situation, which she does. It starts with you and it trickles on down. So it's called a generational curse. Some things happen to one person and then it trickles on down to the next and then it trickles on down to the next and then it trickles on down to that. It's like because of the trauma that my mother experienced, it's kind of like... It trickled on down to her kids. My mother was in a toxic marriage for most of my life. So that trickled on down to me and my sister. And my brother, actually. Because my sister was in a toxic relationship for seven years of her life. I got into toxic relationship after toxic relationship after toxic relationship. Because all I wanted to be was loved. Even though people around me loved me. I wanted some other type of love that I didn't, that I never felt before in my life. And th those men that I dated were giving me that same, were giving me that love that I was looking for. But at least it's, it's what I thought I was looking for. But they really didn't love me like that. After it was all over, they really did not love me. I loved them more than they ever would have loved me. You know what I'm saying? So that's the, that's the kicker right there. Then you got my brother who was just in a toxic relationship with some girl already. And um, even though she was doing so many things to him, he still was able to take her back and deal with her accordingly and still try to give her a chance, still try to see the good in her. But it was toxic and he was addicted to that toxicity. And I think that toxicity is a big part of my life because that's all I ever seen as a child. Starting with my mother and my stepfather and my mother and my father, they had a toxic relationship. So it went from my mother having toxic relationships with her, with her own parents, with her own grandparents, and it trickles on down to her romantic life and it trickles on down to her kids. That's one thing that I don't want for the 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 people that comes up behind me, if my brother were to have a child, I don't want my brother, want my niece or my nephew to have to deal with the things that we did as kids. If my sister ever have a child, I don't want my niece or nephew to deal with that. I have actually a niece and a nephew from my other siblings, and I don't ever want them to grow up with the things that I had to grow up with. So sometimes it starts with the with the top, and it goes all the way down to the bottom. That's what this is. Iyanla calls out Lisa Ray's father for being a manipulator. Because of the things that he was doing to Lisa Ray's mom, um, he used Lisa Ray as a crutch. You know, he spoiled her. He gave her everything she wanted. He promised her the world, and he would be willing to give her the world at the expense of her mom. If you get what I'm saying. He manipulated Lisa Ray into thinking that he was this grand, great old person, but he was manipulating her because... I'm pretty sure if you live in a black household and your mama dating is with a no good ass man, of course she talks about how no good he is all the time. So I'm pretty sure that Lisa Ray heard Katie talk about how ain't shit her husband was. But her husband was giving all of this love to her daughter. You know what I mean? Like giving all this love to their child and making her making her feel like he's not what her mother says that he is. And her mother, you know, I feel like it was a competition. They were com it's like her mother wanted up competing with her own daughter for the affection of her husband. And that is crazy. So it goes into yes or no. They have, they have, the, y'all ask them a question and all they have to do is answer yes or no. Did it hurt Kai when her mother sent her away? Yes. Did she ever speak to Lisa Ray about how it hurt her that she sent her away? No. Katie admits that she brought her daughter around when she was confronting her husband's girlfriends but was she aware that it was emotional manipulation she wasn't aware that that's what that was great answer and great thing great great example of self-awareness does lisa ray believe that her father would have still been alive if her mother never would have kicked him out no but did she ever speak on it and say that that, that she that, that she believed that Yes. So she really didn't know if her father would have stayed alive or not if her, if her mama didn't put her out. But she said it though. Makes sense. Katie called out Lisa Ray for saying you knew that your daddy was a hoe. You knew your daddy was this. You knew your daddy was that. And she had no right. You had no right to go and live with your, with your daddy's mistresses. 
I think that her mother feels betrayed by her. I think that's where it all comes down to. Her mother feels betrayed by her. Lisa Ray's mama feels betrayed by her. She feels very much so betrayed, okay? Um, because of the fact that she was her he, she was her mother. And the mother always assumes that the child will always take their side. But Lisa didn't take her side. She took her daddy's side. The very man that had her around his multiple women. The very man that cheated on her multiple times and put her in emotional warfare. Emotional turmoil. Um, the same man that did all these horrendous things to her but she put him on the pedestal manipulated them with money she stayed with her husband because he would he was manipulating her with money Lisa Ray learns that she manipulates her mom and her daughter with money you know because Lisa Ray herself went after a man because he had money because he was this because he was that like mother like daughter. But Lisa Ray apologizes to both her mom and her daughter for whatever it is that um, she's inflicted upon the both of them. And Lisa, and, and, and Yonga says she has something very beautiful planned for them, but their heart is not there. So, you know, Lisa Ray suggests that you give me six months and we can come back to this. And Yonga said, I'm willing to help you, but your heart has got to be in the right place. I don't think that they were ready for this right now. I don't think that they were ready emotionally. I don't think their spirits were ready. And I don't think that Katie is ready for healing. But she needs to heal. Because her husband is dead. And she's taken out everything that happened with her husband. Out on Lisa Ray. And that's not right. They have a lot of healing to do. And a lot of conversations to be had. With that being said you guys. This be your boy Scotty. And um, my social media is at the bottom. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace out.